oh my gosh, I love Sonic Adventure 2 so much, I just want to replace Sonic with someone else. Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to True Stash. This is a page where I basically just go and do random nonsense that you won't see on the main channel. And today for you guys, we are revisiting a tier list that I did last year, but unfortunately lost the VOD to, and that is, who will survive Sonic Adventure 2? Sonic Adventure 2 is one of those games that are very important to me. It's one of my favorite video games of all time, and I always love how, like, the story flows when you basically have to go from city escape to the prison island stuff the pyramids to the arc and then eventually just saving the day in the end um, with Sonic and Shadow um, and I just kind of thought one day um, in 2023 what if I just replace Sonic with just someone else would they be able to survive all of uh, the events of SA1 well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to find that out today. If this is your first time on this page, hit all the funny buttons down below. And also comment what you thought about this and what character you will put on this list. And uh, I may do more of these in the future, more off-the-cuff videos. Because that's kind of what I want this page to kind of be. Just some kind of fun and just kind of goofy videos talking about some random nonsense. So, let's get started. So ladies and gentlemen, we have gotten a few combatants here. I believe it's over 50 characters here. Um, I don't know the exact details of how many characters they were, but I want to get at least 50, and I might be a little above 50, but um, I wanted to get as many faces in here as possible and trying to do my best to see who will survive the events of Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, Sonic Adventure 2, to be precise. Ah, English. But besides the point, we got so many characters here. Uh, some of these characters I've brought up before in the past. Other characters are some from other media that I didn't experience until lately. And uh, yeah, we're just going to see how this is going to go. I have next to no idea how this is going to go, but we are here for it. So I want to start out with someone just completely out of left field. Uh, I'm going to start with... I'm going to start with Ida, the Owl Lady from uh, Owl House. Uh, Ida, and by you, I, this is going off of some knowledge that I only know of the show. So, um, I only know Season 1 and a bit of Season 2. I know at the end of Season 1, Ida loses her main ability to use a lot of magic and everything. So, the character is not necessarily as strong. But if we take Season 1 Ida and kind of comp that together, I believe... When it comes to her personality and her character, I think she will be able to bond with the Sonic characters pretty well to the point where I think we can believe that she can at least get to the arc, maybe the pyramid. It's very tricky with these two right here because I don't think she can fully save the day. I feel like something is going to show up because in the arc we got stuff like the uh, the bio lizard, uh, the shadow fight. I think she can at least make it to the arc. I think I'm very certain she can. Um, but again, this is just going off of my minimal knowledge as I know because I haven't fully finished the Owl House yet. Maybe she becomes like an overpowered character at the end, but yeah. Let's get another Owl Pocket character. Tomator, baby! Let's get Tomator. Um, I threw this one in as a gag because I have next to no idea, like, if the Cars universe with the Sonic universe would even matter. I mean, there was that gun truck in the beginning of City Escape that is just undefeatable, so if Mator is even, like, a fraction of that, like, power level, I think he got it. I don't think he's escaping Prison Island, though. I think... He's going to get destroyed in, in the wreckage of Prison Island. But uh, I do think it's funny. Uh, you know what, Lightning McQueen, I'm going to throw him up there as well. Uh, actually, I'm going to put him behind Mador because Mador actually has some like spy gear as seen in Cars 2. So I want to believe that Mador can out-survive McQueen. McQueen is just not going to be able to make it, um, unfortunately. Uh, another character, another character, 
uh, Epic Mickey Mickey Mouse. So I specifically picked the Epic Mickey version for a couple of reasons. For one, Epic Mickey is such a different vibe from your typical like Mickey Mouse character. He's not like King Mickey in Kingdom Hearts. He's not the Sorcerer's Apprentice. He's kind of his own type of character in that game. And with using the paint uh, powers of paint and thinner, um, I personally believe Mickey would probably make it to the pyramid. I think he might be able to make it to the arc, but the thing is, I feel like that golem fight might be a little too much for him. But I believe in the middle, I feel like I'm probably like lowballing Mickey's stats. I feel like he would at least make it to the arc now I think about it. I feel like uh, taking on like the battle lizard and everything like that might be a little too crazy for him. And then I have, I don't believe that he can uh, survive like trying to stop uh, the entire space colony from just yeeting down onto Earth. But um, yeah, Ace Attorney Phoenix White. He's not getting past. <laughs> he's not getting past. Um, He's not getting past the escape because basically Ace Attorney, to my knowledge of the first game, he's not really a fighter. I know with like stuff like Marvel vs. Capcom, he's obviously a fighter in that game, but I don't see this man. This man is just straight up a normal human being. I know that in his universe there's like a bunch of like magic and everything like that, but I don't believe Layton. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Phoenix White actually has that. I saw Professor Layton in here earlier, so my apologies. But I don't believe that uh, Phoenix White would actually have um, the capabilities to go and survive Prison Island, the Pyramids, the Ark, and definitely not be able to go into space and save the day in the end. But, um, yeah. So, he goes right there. And I guess because I bomb... Why are you yelling at me, OneDrive? Jeez. I know that, like, PC can't hear it, but oh my gosh. Alright, so, you know what? I'm gonna put... Uh, you know what? I'm gonna... I believe Layton to have enough plot armor and enough knowledge that he can very well make it to the pyramid. I don't know if he can outdo the, uh, the, um, Golem. The egg golem, and then going up into space, that might be a little too much for him. But I feel like, I feel like he's in the mill. I feel like Layton is in the mill. Again, my minimal knowledge, I've only barely dabbled into the first game. I mostly knew Professor Layton from back in the day, when I used to watch the uh, trailers for Miracle Mask. I think that's the Professor Layton game. Um, it looks very interesting. I always loved the art style of Professor Layton, and I think that... If I were to play those games in my own spare time, I would enjoy them. I may or may not cover them on the channels at some point. But I do believe that Phoenix White will be, do like a banner job like being able to get past Pleasant Island and say the escape. But I don't see them tackling like the Ark or anything like that. But I will feel like he will be able to uh, not necessarily beat Shadow, but like basically tire out Shadow in Prison Island and then escape um, to the pyramids, but I don't think he's surviving Prison Island. Uh, Chai, why not? Let's get some Chai action here. Chai is from the game uh, High Fi Rush. Uh, very, very good game. I recently beat it. I think it's one of, if not the best Xbox game since Halo 3. I think it's around that point. I love it from beginning to end. The characters are super likable, and you grow very attached to them. Even at the beginning, Chai is a little... He's a kind of like Sai. He's a little, like, hot-headed. Oh, well, not hot-headed, but, like, very much, like, um... Very much, like, that, like, anime protagonist-type vibe. And I think with, obviously, um... We're going to use kind of post-game Chai for this one. As my post-game, I mean... When he's about to battle the big bad. Um, I think he knows how to very much use like most of his attacks. He hasn't been up to space. But I think he might be able to just beat the bio lizard. But I don't think he can survive uh, the saving the day in the end. Just for the sole fact that I feel like when it comes to him being in space, Sora, oh sorry, not Sora, I saw Sora right there. Uh, Chai can't do it. Can you tell I'm tired? I apologize. 
But um, I think Chai can very well beat the Bio Lizard um, at that point, and then probably Shadow will have to go up into space. And that's why I feel like if you can make it to the Ark, I feel like Shadow will be able to just take over and like, yeah. So we all find Andy. But let's get like some overpowered characters. Uh, I'm gonna go Twilight Sparkle for this one. Twilight Sparkle. Um, I've recently been getting back into MLP thanks to a good friend of mine, the Atoll Samurai. And we watching it, I realized that, dude, the Alicorn race is just broken. It's one of the most broken uh, races in My Little Pony. Because uh, they have pretty much the plot armor to survive most episodes. And they can also shoot out giant laser beams. And uh, I do think we have our first combatant uh, save the day. I personally believe that she would not, like, similar to Layton, I don't think she would literally, like, beat Shadow. But she would, like, during, like, the battles, I feel like she will be able to talk him into, like, do both Sonic and Amy's job of basically convincing Shell to join the good team at the very end of the uh, game. So, I think Twilight Sparkle... Is that the save the day thing? I think that we can make that work. Uh, who else do we got here? Uh, you know what? Well, while we have the Bile of Pony cast, we might as well get these other couple I have. Pinkie Pie, she goes above Twilight. She's just broken. Uh, Rainbow Dash will go to... Uh, I'll go put her behind Ida. I feel like Ida will still do a better job than, um, than Dash in order to like stopping everything. But also, I don't know what the pony equivalent of space is, if there is one. Um, but the main reason I'm pulling Pinky at the top is because she has that Tomb Force power. She's, she, I, I feel, I do not believe for a second that she doesn't have the ability to believe in space. Like, I just don't have that, like, that mindset in mind, but. Yeah. So... Now we made it to some of the other characters here. Simba from The Lion King. I don't think it's game past. I think the, the top of that list. I don't think he's game past Prison Island. I feel like that would not work. <laughs> Simba would just like, not like, Simba's a strong character. Don't get me wrong. But I don't feel like he's that strong in order to like, survive obviously shadow and then just the extraction of um prison island i do think he could very well survive city escape for at least a little bit but i don't remember the last time seeing a lion in a big like uh town like station square so but um yeah let's get some other uh kind of notable characters here uh the team and t crew I decided to uh, put all four of them together, and it's the 2012 show. Uh, I love the uh, 2012 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles show. That is a long, like, sentence, but I do love that show. It's one of my favorites in terms of the Ninja Turtles, like, universes. It got me to really care about the characters in meaningful ways. And a lot of the comedy, I feel like, still holds up to this very day. Um, one of my favorite incarnations of the Ninja Turtles. And I think, I think they're going to survive the pyramid. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. They've been to space. I feel like uh, they might be right next to Chai and Ida because I feel like with the Ninja Turtles, they've been to space before. They dealt with space stuff in the past with like the crane and everything. But I have a feeling that they might not be able to fully save the day. They could very well, but I don't think that... With the four of them combined, I don't think that they could go into space and just straight up save the day in the end. But, uh, let's get another, uh, character that's kind of overpowered. Um, I was thinking either Ken, but you know what? Let's go Mob, uh, from Mob Psycho. Uh, small spoilers from Mob Psycho 100, I might say. So just keep that in mind. Mob Psycho is an anime I got into late this year, or early this year, I should say. 
and it is one of my favorite animes to have ever came out. It's up there as one of my favorite shows. I love Mob as a character. Um, I think he is a very good representation of autism in media. I think that the uh, world building is very interesting and cool. I think the loads of animators that animated that manga really like put in the work in some of the greatest uh, pieces of storytelling. Um, the way Mob works as a character is very cool, and um, I think from what we saw at the end of season one, where um, his his brother was like getting completely wrecked, I feel like that triggered obviously the a hundred, and that's where he goes just completely crazy with his psychic powers. But even then, afterwards, he's just kind of like he's getting like more used to his powers, similar to um, Luz, which I know that I have Luz here on the list. Yep, there she is. Um, but yeah, I know that Luz is similar to Mob, where well, she is just gradually getting stronger with her powers. But Mob, since day one in the first episode, already was pretty darn powerful with his magic, and so I feel like I feel like he's above. Uh, I'll put him above Twilight. I'll put him above Twilight, excuse me. Because I do feel like he's been in... I feel like he can be in situations where space is, like, needed. And he can just use his psychic powers in order to stop the uh, arc from colliding into space. I 100% believe that he can do it. Alright, let's get another random joke character in here. Uh, Papino from Pizza Tower. This is a game that I love playing um, and love and hate playing. It's one of the games that is super hard for me. Um, if you've seen my uh, clip of me just calling out good old Kit the Fox because he was the one that recommended me this game and I freaking love and hate it. But um, so I haven't play played it since that stream. I am long overdue to give that game another playthrough. I'll just play time in general. I think I'm only 9% through the game, so I may go through that now that I beat Hi-Fi Rush on my own time, but or maybe I'll end up going back and streaming it. For my knowledge, he is pretty fast. I think he will just barely get to the arc. I believe for certain he is stubborn enough to get to the arc, I feel like. I have a hundred percent like, belief that he can at least get into the arc. I don't see for a second that he wouldn't be able to get to the arc. So, uh, yeah, he's just going right there. He's super fast. He's like Wario, but mixed with Sonic the Hedgehog. So, I think he will definitely fit up with the arc, uh, gain up there. Uh, let's get another fun joke character. Uh, well, I guess he's not really a joke character if he's, like, legit powerful, but... Uh, Poe from Kung Fu Panda. Uh, keep in mind, I only watched the first three movies, and, uh, I think I saw, like, a bit of the TV show from back in the day. It's a really good show, I just, I don't really know too much outside of, like, those first three movies. Those are really good movies, by the way. But, um, I do believe Poe is someone that goes into... No, you know what, I think... But behind Twilight Sparkle, I have a feeling if he can, like, use, like, his magic chi powers in order to, like, gold golden and everything, he might be able to stop, um, to stop, uh, the arc from crashing onto Earth. I think he can even skadoosh the, uh, <laughs> the arc to, like, a different location just in general or just explode at one of the two. If he just, like, evacuates literally everybody that was on there. And then just, like, skadoosh blows blow him up. But that's just my, uh, that's my, uh, headcanon for him. Uh, let's get another type of fun character. Mr. Incredible. I think he... I think Mr. Incredible can very well get on the arc. And I'll put him above Epic Mickey. Uh, no, no, I put him like that. There we go. I think I do that. Mr. Incredible is a strong character, and judging by the first movie, he is a really strong character. Um, similar to Popino, I feel like he'll be stubborn enough to just get up into the arc. I feel like that he can't necessarily do it. My nose is itchy like crazy. This is what happens when I film a video at 11.09 in the nighttime. But yeah, I do feel like with his uh, strength capabilities, 
and no knowledge that his family is in trouble if he doesn't stop the arc from quieting. I feel like that it will give him enough dedication to at least make it to the arc, maybe defeat Shadow and then destroy the um and then destroy the uh the bio lizard. So yeah. Uh, let's get some other characters in here. Uh, Super Mario. If we replace Sonic with Mario, what world will we live in? Um, I think, I think he's above Poe. I think Mario's definitely above Poe. Especially if we decide to, like, power him up a little bit by making, like, a comp Mario. By having, like, all of his abilities from, like, the RPGs and stuff like that. I feel like he will be a fun character to kind of just do some random nonsense with, and I feel like that Mario would be, will probably be on the toe-to-toe -to -toe with Poe. I mean, obviously when he gets that superstar, I feel like he will be able to just destroy the Bio Lizard, like, in an instant, so, yeah. Um, Solid Snake, uh, <laughs> so I've only really played the beginning of the first Metal Gear. This has been a series that I've loved looking into, similar to Kingdom Hearts. The story is what drove me into the series, and, uh, the story of, uh, Solid Snake and everything like that is just so, so intense, so crazy, that I just fell straight in love with it. I do think he might be able to, uh, I feel like he might be able to, uh, again, knowing my knowledge, my minimum game knowledge of the first game, I think he might be able to sneak his way into the arc, I feel like, he can definitely get his way into the arc, I think he, I'll put him, uh, I'll put him above Pepino, uh, you know, I'll put him above Mr. Pebble too. Um, I think that he has the know-how and the spots to get into Ark. Um, I don't think he has some superhuman ability. He's not wide and where he's, like, part ninja that can be able to, like, go into space and cut up the, uh, the bio lizard that's and falling down with, like, the Ark and everything, so. Alright, and then we have another character, uh, Princess Mononoke. I'm putting Princess Mononoke at the top of the pyramid for a couple reasons. One, Princess Mononoke is a character that uh, is very much at, like, she's at her strongest when she's in the woods. She knows everything around the woods, her entire movie is based around the woods. I don't believe for a second that she can necessarily figure out all the, like, modern technology to get into space and uh, save the day. But I do believe she can at least escape Prison Island. I do think that she can uh, escape the city. But um, other than that, I don't think that she can necessarily escape, uh, like, obviously the arc and then saving the day in the end. Uh, Luz Nerseda from the Owl House. I think, with my minimal knowledge that I know of the later seasons, I do know that she ends up getting more powerful than Ida. I think... Uh, I think I am in the right to say that she can very well save the day. But again, that's just because I know that, well, obviously, my knowledge is that she gets stronger by the end of uh, the Owl House. I mean, I'm imagining so. Um, again, I, don't, I haven't really watched enough after S1. I do know that after S1, um, she has more magic than Ida. But I think she also gains more abilities later in, in the long run, so... I do think that uh, she can barely do it. I feel like out of all the characters so far that I think are in the arc, I think that she can barely itch her way in saving the day in the end. Uh, let's get one of the, uh, let's get another random character in here. Let's get uh, Mega Man X. I know he's kind of cut off here. You can only really see his legs, but... Um, Mega Man X, I think, goes above e, uh, Luz, Luz, can't English, Luz, because um, Mega Man has done this type of thing before, and I feel like he survived space adventures before. Again, I think I've, my Mega Man X knowledge is uh, X1 and X2, and a little bit of like the X series in general. Um, 
but I haven't exactly delved deeper into the Mega Man X series. That's something I want to do for like a future like probably review on Gaming Truge or probably just a live stream on my Twitch page. So, yeah. Um, now we're getting a little bit closer. Uh, and I guess I should have put this in with uh, when I put in uh, Lose, but I don't think Kane is making it out of Prison Island. He, uh, you know what? I'll put him above Simba. I feel like he will have enough uh, sweet smarts and he'll talk enough smack to Shadow that I feel like uh, <laughs> I feel like he would uh, be able to handle himself. But in terms of escaping the island before it blows up, I don't see an outcome where Keen survives. I'm sorry. Um, aim from Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uh, I'll put him. I'll put him above Mario. Actually, yeah, I'll put him above Mario. Um, because Ain has done some crazy, like, stuff before. I don't think he's ever been to space, per se. I haven't watched all of Legend of Cool, so I'm not sure if it explains it in that show. But I do know that Ain has done some amazing stuff with, like, wind, water, earth, and fire. And then when he's in that Avatar state, he's kind of just untouchable. Like, he... He, like, he has technically died by lightning before when he was in that state. But I do feel like if if he plays his cards right with the Avatar state, I have a strong feeling that he might be able to outwit, uh, the, obviously, the Bile Lizard. And then, of course, stop the, uh, the giant arc from crashing onto Earth. It might take all of his power and he might be unconscious afterwards. But I think Aang would make a perfect, um, like, kind of, like, down-the-middle character. Because, obviously, he, I feel like Twilight, when she was all, like, powered up, could be a little stronger than Aang. But, again, I'm not 100% sure on that. Now, what I am sure is my homie Sora here. Uh, I'm gonna get this one out of the way. I think it goes above Pinkie Pie. Um, not because Sora is, like, God or anything like that, but I feel like... Out of all the nonsense since KH1, like, mind you, if I'm going to take all these characters at their, like, first form, like, obviously there's some exceptions I've made, but if I were to take, I guess, the Season 1 or the first game version of Sora, Sora has not only battled the little devil in one of the final stages, but then, of course, Ansem in a space that looks something akin to space, I think, so, and then... Obviously, using the power of, like, Gravity, uh, Gravity, uh, I think that's the spell's name. Um, I feel like he can easily, like, be able to control the arc through that way. Well, just from the first game. Like, they, since game one, I feel like Sora would be able to save the, um, the arc and save the day in the end. So. Cameo from Cameo Elements of Power. This is a cult classic 360 game developed by Rare, one of the hidden banners on the 360. And I think that they can make it, uh, I'll, I'll say that they can make it to the pyramid. Um, similar to Mononoke, I think um, Cameo is a Schwann like character. But she's definitely at her best whenever she is in, like, more element stuff. So whenever she's, like, in the forest and stuff like that. And for people that don't know what her stick is, her stick is that she can transform into different types of elemental warriors. So, like, there's, like, an ice chinchilla that she can use. There's, like, major wound, which is, like, this earth ball. There's this giant, like, dragon that I always thought was Trollazon from back in the day. So, I think that type of character it can very much get past to the pyramid. I don't see them really getting to the arc or end up saving the day in the end. Um, Ash and Pikachu from Pokemon. Um, these characters I don't think need any introductions. I think you guys know who they are. Uh, the movies have gone insane. The in-universe stuff that they've done over the past 20 years, it's just insane. And I think they might be able to outbeat the Ninja Turtles and just, ba like, not even barely. I feel like they can easily beat, uh, obviously, all the obstacles from City Escape, the Prison Island, the Pyramid. And I feel like they, ca they can very well make it to uh, the Ark. The only thing I'm leaving out is the fact that I feel like they might 
they might be able to. I mean, they've been in space before, but Ash has not, like, been in, like, when, when he, the one time I remember him being in space, he was, him and Pikachu were basically, like, about dead, and Victini went and saved them in the Pokemon Black and White movie. Naruto. So, here's the thing with Naruto, similar to Soa. I'm using the first version of this character. Obviously, in Naruto, the last season, Space, he could easily save him um, in that way. I feel like he would be at the top of the list with, like, Sora, Pinkie Pie, Mob, and all of them. But, given that it's part one, the original, uh, I think, I think Kwama can very well survive Space. I, I, I'll put him at the very end, though, because if it's part one, he can't really... I, I don't see a universe where Naruto from part one, and by part one, I mean just the all the original manga. Like, I'm not talking, like, Shippuden and everything like that, and I'm not talking just the first volume. I'm talking the original series in terms of, like, the tuning exam, the Sasuke retrieval arc, just everything that's happened in part one Naruto. I have a strong feeling that Naruto will just barely be able to save the day with, the, obviously, the power of Kuwama. Kuwama might be a little bit more, like, aggressive and a little bit more, like, destructive than, like, say, Kuwama and Naruto the last. But I have a strong feeling that um, Naruto will be able to make his way out of there. He m will definitely have the best time trying to convince Shadow to join their side for the greater good. Buzz Lightyear. Buzz Lightyear. <laughs> I don't think Buzz is getting past City Escape. I honestly don't believe Buzz is getting past City Escape at all. Like, he's a fun character, don't get me wrong. But he is a toy, and if we're talking about the live act, of oh, the, the live action, uh, Lightyear, goodness no, I have no idea. He will just break reality instead of save reality. But I digress. Link from Breath of the Wild. Now I specifically chose Breath of the Wild Link because I remember in my video, my stream from uh, last year, I did uh, Twilight Princess Link if I remember correctly. And so, um, going with Breath of the Wild Link for this one, um, I have a strong feeling that Breath of the Wild Link, I think he can concoct, uh, Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, like, I'm copying those two together. I feel like he would be in between Ash and Chai, because he will use his, uh, creativity and his wits in order to obviously make sure he can survive space and, um, Make sure that he can at least fight Shadow. But I don't think he will have enough capabilities of finishing off, uh, obviously, the Bio Lizard in space and then saving the uh, arc from crashing. Monkey D. Luffy. So I think I want to put him above Naruto. And I think that that's just in general what I've done. I like Monkey D. Luffy a lot more. He's a lot more of a fun protagonist. Both of them are way fun protagonists. But the difference between Naruto and Luffy for me is the fact that Luffy has mainly one weakness. And that is water. So I think the only thing he would have any sort of trouble with would be Prison Island. But then again, if he were to, say, grapple on to something like uh, Tails' ship that he flies off, the tornado. I feel like he would be able to escape that uh, relatively easily. We are almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Master Chief, I'm gonna say Master Chief can, uh, I think he can finish the fight. Master Chief can just definitely finish the fight. I wanna put him, uh, I'll put him, uh, I'll put him behind Pinkie Pie. Master Chief has uh, obviously had years of space training and I don't think he would definitely, he might be able to team up with uh, Shadow very reluctantly. I can't English, jeez, this is, this is why I don't record videos late at night. So, uh, very, like, I don't think he would necessarily trust Shadow, but he will still team up with them for the be uh, better good. And then, obviously, all the knowledge of Cortana, I believe he will be able to um, not only save the day, but he will be able to not die. So, that's good. Asta from Black Clover. 
I think he'll be, uh, be able to make it to the pyramid. I feel like he's stubborn enough to make it to the pyramid because uh, Asta, from the knowledge I know of Black Clover, he's a strong main character. He um, doesn't have magic, but he has like a grimoire that like gives him a certain kind of magic. It's, I think it's like anti-magic or whatever. I feel like that can get him as far as the pyramid. I think afterwards, um, I don't think his devil form, or I forgot what that form is necessarily called, would end up surviving space of all places, but I do think that he would at least make it to the pyramid. Uh, Titus from Final Fantasy X. A uh, similar story. I feel like he will be stable enough to get to the pyramid. He might be able to like get into the arc, but I don't think he's surviving arc. Okay, yeah, you know what? I think I'll put him, I'll put him behind Pino. Like, the arc is like, you have... Obviously, the Eggman fight, you have the Shadow fight, and then you have the Force Battle Lizard fight. I feel like out of those three fights, he might be able to defeat them all, but it depends. He might not be able to, because I definitely like the space and everything like that. And I also don't think he's that strong of a character in order to put him in those situations. Granted, I haven't beaten 10 all the way through yet, but I have known of the ending of the game, and I know that even in the ending of the game, I don't think that putting him at the end of the arc is necessarily out of character for him, if you catch my drift. Cloud Schweif. I am putting Cloud above Twilight and above Mob. Cloud has done some, like, if you haven't played 7 yet, obviously spoilers here, but um, Cloud has um, completely just, like, done some... Like, he battled Cephaloth, a character who literally destroyed planets. I don't doubt for a second that uh, Cloud can use his materia in order to stop the Ark from crash landing and, of course, defeating the Bile Lizard. Scrooge McDuck, one of my favorite characters in fiction from the 2017 uh, version of DuckTales. I think... He is very much surviving, and I think I want to put him above, uh, yeah, I'll do that. I'll put him above Luffy, but underneath, um, Luz. I think Luz has the more, uh, obviously Luz is younger, I feel like she'll be able to move fast. Not saying Scrooge can't, but Scrooge is also a kind of character that I feel like wouldn't necessarily, um, like, obviously, in the DuckTales universe, they can technically breathe in space with the certain gum. And I feel like he would still be able to, obviously, use his wits and his knowledge of the problem. He's a good problem solver, so I feel like he would be able to um, stop everything and save the world um, in Sonic Adventure 2. Um, Gohan from Dragon Ball Super Hero particular. So, reason why Super Hero is because that's my most knowledge I have of Gohan. I haven't really watched a ton of Dragon Ball. I'm making that up as I've been going through the original series. I've been uh, playing games like Dragon Ball Z Kakarot to try to get more of the Dragon Ball narrative. And I do love the Dragon Ball series. Um, but obviously, any type of Dragon Ball character I feel like should be at the top of the list just by default because they'll play Schwann. I'm gonna put him above. I'm gonna put him above uh, Poe. I'll put him in between Poe and in between. Uh, you know what? I'll do it that way. There we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. The shuffle him out a little bit. I think he goes uh, now just kind of more in the mi to upper middle. Samus Erwin, I feel like, would blow up the <laughs> the arc, and I think it will be perfect. I'm putting him next to Poe. Samus Erwin has blown up many planets. Mulan from the movie Mulan. Uh, <laughs> Prison Island. I, uh, no, you know what, I'll, I'll say the pyramid. I'll put her above Professor Layton. Uh, she's definitely a strong character. Uh, again, similar stuff. I feel like when she, the tech stuff starts showing up, I'm not 100% sure if they'll be able to handle it. I'm actually going to go move Professor Layton a little up. Like, I, I know that Professor Layton is, like, 50s, if I remember correctly. Like, 1700s, 1800s, around there. So, I know technology hasn't really caught up to that point yet. But, I do think that it can very well work um, for them. So, kind of... Staying up the stage a little bit. Oh, we're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost done. 
Alrighty, we got Gon from Hunter Hunter. Gon is a very interesting character because I don't think they've done anything space related. They are a very strong character, and very charismatic. I think he's gonna go above, uh, you know what, I'll put him above Chai. I feel like he'll be able to survive all the events of the arc, but I don't think he'll be able to survive the space, uh, inside of space and fully destroy the second phase of the battle wizard and then obviously stop the arc from colliding ken masters here we go i'm actually going to put ken and wii u together so wii u um yeah i'm putting ken and wii u up and uh could save the day i feel like they can very well save the day they're very superhuman in their abilities i don't doubt for a second that they can save the day again it might be um you know what? i think i'm gonna put them above i'll put them above uh x i feel like both of them together i'll put them above x deck you for my hero academia i want to put a uh i might put behind naruto um i think that technically he might do a better job than part one naruto i think i'm probably gonna put him in the middle there that that sounds about right Roxas from Kingdom Hearts 2 and 3. He's done some crazy stuff within days and within 3. I think he will go above... I think I'll put him above Aang. I, fe I feel like putting him above Aang will definitely do it. Uh, Sasuke Part 1. I don't think this man's surviving... Uh, he might survive the arc. I'm going to put him up behind Link and above Ash. But I don't, don't think he's literally surviving all of Ark. Chun Li, I think, is surviving the Ark barely. I'd say she's barely surviving it. Because, again, she's not as super powerful as Wii U or Ken from, if I can remember the lore right. But they are definitely strong characters. Jin Kazuya from Tekken Bloodlines, partic particular. Tekken Bloodlines is a fantastic retelling of the Tekken anime. And I believe, um, I'm going to be telling of Tekken 3, I can't English, apparently. Uh, <laughs> so I think that, um, I think that Jin can very well, I'd put him above, you know, I'll put him above, uh, I'll put him above Mario. Jin definitely has, obviously, the, uh, Mishima bloodline, which... Mishimas are just indestructible, so even if he does, like, end up, um, dying in the process, he will just end up pulling what Shadow did and just come back to life. There's nothing that says that Jin can very well, like, die and come back. Like, I feel like that's a thing that he can do. Noctis, um, I'm going Noctis... Uh, I'm playing Noctis up next to Master Chief. I feel like Noctis and uh, Cloud and Chief have all three have done like out of this world stuff in their games. And I feel like that Noctis um, obviously having the power of the six by its side. I think all six of those Titans can very well be able to uh, stop and save the day. So, But yes, we made it to our last three combatants. Uh, I want to start with the most out of place character, Puss in Boots from Puss in Boots: The Last Wish. I think he is our final one for the pyramid. I think after the pyramid, he might be able to go into space and save the day, but I highly doubt it because um, after that, I feel like it's just a lot of battles that I feel like he might not win. Granted, it is Puss in Boots. If we're using the Last Wish version. He very well could be on his last life. If we use the Puss in Boots from the Shrek series as well as the his own movie, I feel like I I feel like he might have enough one-ups, if you will, in order to survive. But given that it is the Last Wish version, I think he's not surviving the pyramid. After the pyramid, I don't think he can very well get onto the arc and save the day at the end. Tifa Lockhart. Putting her next to Cloud because Tifa was with Cloud when they were fighting uh, Sephiroth. And then we make she was like like actually being able to punch Sephiroth in the face a couple of times. So, you know. 
actually a part of the fights with them. I mean, I know that she was a part of the fights in uh, the original game as well. But in that original game, you can pick your party members. In 7 Remake, you are, uh, you are stuck with certain party members and you can't necessarily switch out with that. And then the last character, Katsuki Bakugo. I'm putting Bakugo at the, the last part that I think she can very well save the day. He can very well save the day, but I don't believe that he can, um, definitely, like, he will, like, barely survive. And then again, if we deciding not to do Season 1 with Bakugo and Deku, I feel like both of them are in, on the similar stuff, especially after the, uh, Heroes Rising movie, which I know that that's not, like, a canon movie. But I still feel like if, hypothetically speaking, in this hypothetical of them being in Sonic Adventure 2, if I were to use those versions of the movie versions, I feel like that they will be able to do that in a pretty, like, quick fashion. And so, yeah, this is my uh, tier list of who will survive Sonic Adventure 2 battle. I think that's everything I have to say. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video. If you guys want to see more of my content, I have my main channel, which is The Gaming Truge, with a lot of scripted content over there. I also won my Twitch streams over on Twitch.tv, where I play a lot of video games. I just got back into streaming today at the time of this video's recording and you guys can go and see all the VODs on this page as well as some fun AMVs here from time to time and or some funny like out of context clips from my stream. So thank you guys so very much for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night or day and as always keep gaming.